Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I have an all new release rambles. So we're going to be chatting about a few upcoming makeup releases, some of which are out already, some of which have just been sneak peeked. I'm going to let you know my thoughts, let you know whether or not I plan to pick any of these up. And as always, I will have Samantha's community playlist linked down below if you love these types of videos. I highly recommend checking the playlist out. I'm going to be honest. There's a lot of releases right now and I actually wasn't planning on filming a release rambles. You guys know I'm getting ready to leave so I'm doing pre-filming and I didn't want to film a release rambles. I didn't want to pre-film one because that wouldn't make any sense because they're supposed to be about new releases. But I didn't think I was going to film one before I left because I had other videos that I wanted to do first. But there are so many new releases, especially holiday releases coming out, that you guys keep tagging me and you keep asking my thoughts. So I decided I'd go ahead and film one today, but I'm going to be honest. There's not a ton that I'm interested in, but I'm still excited to kind of walk you through my thought process, let you know which ones I may or may not be picking up. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So this first one I'm a little bit behind on, so I'll, we'll just get it out of the way first because everyone's talking about the new Naked Cherry Palette. So let me scoot over so I can put a photo up. I don't know, I'm kind of mixed thoughts on this. I don't hate it. I feel like it was a smart release for Urban Decay and I feel like berry tones and some more like red tone, neutral tones, how many times am I gonna say tones, is kind of becoming the new neutral and the new naked. So it makes sense, like I get the direction that they're going. I think they're a little bit late to come out with this. I think it would have been more impactful if they released this a year ago. That being said, I don't hate it. It's just hard for me to justify $54 for this palette when the color scheme has been done and done and done. But I can see like the nostalgia factor behind it for the fact that it is a naked palette and they just discontinued the naked one and now they're coming out with this. So I. I feel like a lot of people are going to be interested in picking it up. I like it. I don't hate it. I don't think it's a dumb release, but I'm probably going to be passing over it. One thing that I'm excited about, there's a fly, oh my god. One thing that I'm excited about, but I'm not excited about, <laughs> Kylie Cosmetics is releasing single eyeshadows. Now I'm excited about this, well, let me I'm not making any sense. Let me back up. I'm not picking these up because Kylie Cosmetics sells brushes that are made with real animal fur, so I don't support that brand anymore. However, I'm still excited about this because I'm very optimistic that this means the tides are turning and we're moving into single eyeshadows because I, I don't necessarily think Kylie Cosmetics is a trend-setting brand per se, but to see a brand that large and that mainstream to start promoting single eyeshadows makes me think we might begin back into single eyeshadows and I would love to see other brands do singles. However, I keep hearing people say like $7 for Carly Cosmetics singles, that's a great price. I don't know what single eyeshadows you are buying but there are plenty that are far less than $7. I feel like we just think of, I know Anastasia singles are $12 and I know that Urban Decay and other brands have singles that are above $12. But just a single pan eyeshadow, you can easily find those from indie brands between $3 and $6. So like $7, I don't even, if I did even support Kylie Jenner or Kylie Cosmetics, I would probably buy like no more than four of these because $7 is a lot for a single. So there are other, and I'm not going to spend too much longer on this, but as, actually, I don't know if everyone realizes this, but Kylie Cosmetics has the same parent company as ColourPop. They're both divisions of Seed Beauty as well as KKW Beauty and that new skincare brand that ColourPop started. Well, no, not ColourPop started, but that new skincare brand that everyone keeps connecting to ColourPop. They're all under Seed Beauty, which is why there are so many similarities between Kylie Cosmetics products and ColourPop products. And I love the ColourPop singles, so I don't doubt that these singles will be good quality. But it's like, why would I buy your $7 single eyeshadows when they're probably the exact same as the $4 ones from ColourPop? Speaking of things that are overpriced, Natasha Denona is coming out with a new eyeshadow palette. This is called the Safari Palette. Now, as the sneak peeks were coming in and we were getting like the black and white photos hearing that it was Safari themed, my interest peaked. I'm not going to lie. And I can't believe I'm going to say what I'm about to say, but I kind of have had this strange urge recently to want to buy a Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette. What is going on? I'm falling into the hype. I need to back it up. Back it up. 
But I've been thinking a lot recently, like maybe I'll really save up and for Christmas I'll buy myself one of the like really expensive palettes. And I need to talk myself out of that because I don't, uh, I don't know. But anyway, so I was like, hmm, what is this palette going to be? Maybe this will be one I'll get. But I, I, can't, I, I know about, some people are excited about this, so I'm not going to say that it's boring. Because it's not boring, but I'm like, it's so muted. It's not that unique. It's very subculture-esque. And I just feel like a lot of the tones look very similar. And it might be the photo I'm looking at. But if I'm going to buy an eyeshadow palette that's over $100 or even over like $60, actually, let's get real. If I'm going to buy an eyeshadow palette that's more than $40, I want to like really be excited about all the shades and feel like there is enough diversity within the palette that I can do a lot. And most of these deep shades look very similar. And I get that the undertones probably vary, but... I just don't see this being a worthwhile investment for me, especially factoring in that they're all matte shades. And I like an all matte palette for pairing, but if I'm going to spend over $100 on a palette, or like I said, over $40 on a palette, I want it to be a staple for me. I don't want it to be that like one palette that I pair with my other stuff. So I'm going to be passing over this one. Now, Urban Decay has announced as announced, what am I saying? <laughs> now, Urban Decay has announced their holiday release. It is going to be the Elements palette, and I was not expecting this at all, but they actually sent it to me in PR, so I wanted to share it with you guys. I have gotten some tags on this one as well. This is what it looks like. It's pretty large. It's Is it bigger than I expected? It's a little bit bigger than I expected. Like, I mean, I have a small head, but this is probably bigger than my head. Now, the thing I will say about this I wish it had more matte shades because you just have this, this, this. And this is a matte with glitter in it, so it's a matte, but it's not a matte. But there's not really any depth to this palette aside from like this dark blue and this green, but you don't have any deep matte shades, so you don't have anything to deepen your look up with. That's like my biggest complaint with this palette. I would love like one or two more deep matte tones. And I've only used this one, so I'm not giving you a review. I'm just kind of talking you through my thoughts right now. I used it today. This is the first time I've used it. If you're wondering, I have this on the inner half of my lid, this on the outer half, and this on my lower lash line along with a green eyeliner. And then I tried to use this on my inner corner, which this is supposed to be like a topper transformer shade. I tried to use it on my inner corner and it's just too glittery so I had to use something else. I do think this is pretty and it's one of the most unique palettes and most fun color stories I've seen Urban Decay do in a while. So I'm not mad about it. It is bulky and it's weird. The shades, I swatched this yesterday and I was like, ugh, I don't think this is going to be very good because most of these do not swatch that well. But my experience today, at least with just the green shades, pretty good. So I'm going to let you know my thoughts later. I... I might do a dedicated review on this. If I have time, I'm not sure. Would you like to see that? Let me know. ELF has a new palette. This is the Opposites Attract palette. You have 18 shades and it is $14. That is an amazing price. I don't think I'm going to be picking this up because it's not screaming to me. I feel like if I did pick it up, it'd probably just be because I convinced myself to pick it up because it's affordable. Like, I don't really want it that much, but there's like a little urge in me that's like, it's only $14, come on. But do I need it? No. So I'm probably going to pass over it, but I do think it's a, it's a pretty palette from the drugstore. We don't usually see color stories like this. I love that it's a mix of warm tones and cool tones. It's very on trend, so... My hat is off to you, Elf. I'm not going to pick it up, but I do like it. All right, let's talk about Huda Beauty. They're coming out with new Obsessions palettes now. I will say I've always thought her Obsessions palettes were brilliant. I wish, I'm like hoping that more brands come out with something similar to this because I love the idea of a mini nine pan palette. Nine pans is like the perfect size for a palette. Between nine and 12, so they have a few new color variations, and I'm not going to lie, I think these are beautiful, they're creative, they're well thought out, they're innovative, we're not seeing things like this, so I appreciate that, and I also appreciate that the price tag is a little bit more affordable, but I don't support Huda Beauty, they, they do, there's a lot of 
fishy things that have and continue to happen surrounding the brand so that just kind of has put a bad taste in my mouth but the main reason that I don't support their brand is because they sell mink eyelashes and let me just get off on a little tangent I feel like I'm getting off on a lot of tangents on this video so after this I'm gonna stay on track but Huda Beauty and other brands that do this they are not the only brand that sells mink lashes and does this but let me just say on video I've said this before but I will say it again there's no such thing as cruelty free mink eyelashes I don't care what these brands say Huda Beauty says right on their page cruelty free mink eyelashes and I'm like that's not a thing they're like implying that they just have pet minks and they're just walking around picking up the shedded hairs that come off of them it does not work like that there is cruelty involved in mink eyelashes so it's <sighs> yeah it's not even necessarily that they sell mink lashes like that it frustrates me in itself but I'm also like it's kinda like my stance on parent companies like I would rather support the brands that they sell that don't test because it sends them a message that there's an interest in this but it's just like the fact that it's so deceiving to the consumer to say like oh these are ethically produced mink eyelashes that's not a thing anywho Too Faced the gingerbread palette what is going on with Too Faced in 2018 like I would give Too Faced the best improved brand award what do you guys think? Would you agree? Because a year ago at this time, I feel like we were all rolling our eyes at everything Too Faced did. And Too Faced was doing something at least once a week. They were coming out with something constantly. And I, for one, was not having it. I was kind of starting. I wasn't taking Too Faced as seriously. And don't get me wrong. In 2018, I do not think that they are perfect. Still have a lot of things they could work on. They still release a little too much. Can be hit or miss. But this gingerbread palette, I'm like, it feels like there was effort put into this. This is a color story that makes sense. It's not the most creative thing I have ever seen in my life. It's lacking a little bit of depth. It needs a few deeper shades to ground it, in my opinion. But I don't hate it. This is probably the best holiday release. Ah, that's a stretch, but it might be. It's one of the best holiday releases I've ever seen Too Faced do. So... There's a little part of me that wants this. And I think it's just that hot pink shade. I've like had to sit here so many times and like cover it up like, okay, wait, do you still like the palette? And I do still like it, but that hot pink shade is definitely the selling point. So I'm going to watch some reviews on this one. One thing that I'm very excited about, and I think a lot of people are as well, we don't have a ton of details at the time I'm filming this. I'm pre-filming it like two days early, so maybe by the time this comes out, we will, and if we do, I'll update you guys. But Juvia's Place is coming out with a foundation. I love Juvia's Place, and I am so excited to see how they do with this foundation because even just seeing the swatches of a few of the shades that they're going to have, you can tell that they are putting in such an effort to ensure that this is an inclusive line for very very deep skin tones, very very light skin tones, and every undertone within that range. So I am so excited about this. At this time we really don't have any details on it so I don't know if it's full coverage, light coverage, medium coverage, matte, dewy. I do know that they had a couple weeks ago on their Instagram story they were doing those, what are those called? Where you can type in on someone's story and answer their questions. They had those and they were asking us like, what name would you want? What finish would you want? What blah, 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 blah. So I'll let you guys know. What, let me know if you voted in there. You told them. What did you tell them? I told them medium coverage and matte. Or did I say dewy? Because I like both. So I'm, I could go either way. I don't care if it's matte or dewy. But I'm like, can we get a medium coverage? We have so many full coverage. Not too many light coverage, but I, I like a medium. So that would make me happy. But I'll probably still buy it even if it's full coverage because... This is a launch that I want to support. Okay, something that's really cool and I wanted to share. So this is an indie brand called Pretties For Your Face. <laughs> and they have some really unique palettes, but one, their most recent, is themed after Hocus Pocus. This is so cute. So it says the Sanderson Sisters. That is the name of the palette. This is a little five pan palette, which as I said earlier, I'm not like super into five pan palettes. So I might... I'll probably skip over this, but I wanted to share it because I know 
that once September the 1st comes around, it's fall, and I don't know about you guys, but I can't even get on Facebook without seeing Hocus Pocus memes, or just get on any social media without seeing Hocus Pocus memes, so I know that there is an audience for this, and I wanted to share it. I love Hocus Pocus, and I think this is so cute, and I wanted to shout out this indie brand, so if you are interested in this, I checked their website, and it's $20, so not bad at all. Sticking with indie brands, one of my favorites, Blush Tribe, gave us a very, very, very early sneak peek for one of their upcoming palettes. This is going to be a collaboration with Safai Kelly, and I love her. I'm so excited. Okay, Blush Tribe announced a while, a little while ago that it was going to be a collab with someone, but they didn't say who, but I knew. I knew it would be Safai, and I'm really excited about this. This is so pretty. It's, it, I love her, so. I'm very, very, very interested in this because I love her and I love Blush Tribe and I like what's going on here. And finally, let's talk about the Becca Volcano Goddess Palette. Mmm, I don't hate it. I don't love it. I'm not going to pick it up. It, I've heard a lot of people say that they were more excited about the outside packaging than the inside and that's kind of how I feel. I will say though, for Becca, I, my expectations are never like that high for their palettes and not not because I don't like Becca because I love Becca they're one of my favorite brands but I don't expect them to come out with like a rainbow palette or anything too colorful or different so this it's like it's on brand I expected this I'm like you know what it makes sense to me I'm not mad about it but it's not anything eye-catching enough that I'm gonna run out and pick it up so that's gonna go ahead and complete this release rambles I hope you guys enjoyed hearing my thoughts I would say the product that I'm probably the most excited about is the Juvia's Place Foundation. And then after that, I'm excited to see the next, well, maybe it's not the next, we might see something between now and then, but the collaboration between Blush Tribe and Safai Kelly coming out next spring. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, let me know by giving it a thumbs up, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!